everybody, this is Kirk Barbera with Real Elite, giving you another business book tip of the day. Uh, that's why I pick a new note card every day. It's pretty random, but sometimes I try to keep it in the same you know, categories. This one's a little bit different, and it comes from Daniel Pink's book, To Sell is Human, which is a great book if you're in sales, if you're in uh, marketing, or anything to do with you know, um, interacting with people outside of your company. If you interact with people outside of your company, and your job is to, you know, it's customer service or whatever it is to help, you know, keep that client, to help sell that client something new, whatever it is, any kind of, even if you're in accounting and you're in uh, accounts payable or accounts receivable and you're dealing with other people and you want to keep that vendor, you want to keep that new client and you have to be good in the way that you talk to them, this is a great book to have. And um, this card, which I have not read until just now, it's part of what this business book tip of the day is all about. It's called, it's called Bob the Builder's Self-Talk. Bob talks to himself. I don't know if you remember Bob the Builder, but apparently there's, I, I don't remember it, but I remember him writing about this. But apparently Bob talks to himself, but Bob's self-talk is neither positive nor negative. Instead, to move himself and his team, he asks the question, can we fix it? So this is a very interesting type of concept when you're in sales. It's the kind of talk you do in your head. So I've always heard this about people in sales that, oh, I can never do that because I, you know, I, I couldn't handle the rejection. Or how do you handle, you know, that kind of rejection? How do you handle, you know, um, asking for money or what other, you know, the expectations or thoughts of other people? And Daniel Pink talks a lot about in his book, To Sell as Human, the talking that we do to ourselves in our heads, especially great salesmen. And he uses a lot of great examples and tells stories um, in his books. So one of the things that I think is very important if you're in sales, I mean, you're dealing with a lot, you are dealing with rejection and you're dealing even with rejection in ways people don't think about ahead of time. So for instance, you, the second people get a whiff that you're a salesman, they get a little bit nervous. You know, if I'm making a cold call and a secretary or receptionist is thinking that she's, uh, you know, that this is a, a, uh, a sales call of some sort, she gets very frust flustered and I have to work past that barrier to make her feel comfortable because automatic that's a form of rejection automatically she's already shut trying to shut me down and i have to learn ways to you know make her feel comfortable that i'm not here just to take advantage i'm just here to show a product or something anyway the self-talk you do is critical i was just going uh just you know let you know like i was going door to door canvassing to uh real estate realtors in San Antonio to sell them our Real Elite video production services. And one of the things that occurred was I got rejected once, only once. Everyone else was nice because I had a gift. Um, you know, I usually have like a little rubber ducky because my theory in cold calling and canvassing is that nobody can turn away someone with a rubber duck. Come on, I give you a rubber duck. You can't, you can't be mean to me. But I give them like a book, a rubber duck, and then a little flyer and that's it. I don't have any big asks. I, I just give, give, give. And then for me, it's all about the follow-up and building that list one, one person at a time. But the, per, the, the, the person, you know, was, uh, I think, rather than the receptionist who would have been nice about it, I think the owner of that particular broker or something was extremely rude to me. Uh, and, and that's just the way. He's like, no, get out of here. Don't you read this? And it, it doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. And so the talk that I had in my head, and I, I did think about this, was that guy must could have been having a bad day. He could have been, um, you know, just a jerk. <laughs> but it had nothing to do with me. You know, I reminded myself that I've gone to hundreds of places and not been rejected. And this is true about rejection in general, you know, um, this kind of mentality. Now, the Bob the Builder talk is very helpful because it helps you think that you don't want to be super positive or super negative. Like, that's the argument Daniel Pink talks about. Super positive, super negative are both wrong. You want to be, you want to have, you know, proper in-between self-talk, like real self-talk. And instead of saying, oh, you know, it's a good thing, um, you know, oh, you know, everything's shiny and hunky-dory and be what's called a Pollyanna where you pretend everything's amazing even though everyone's rejecting you and it's horrible, you know, and, and that, that way you don't learn how to, you know, assess like, why are people rejecting me all the time and how can I be better? You know, so you want to have positive self-talk, but you want to be realistic too. Um, his, so Bob, the, it's Bob, Bob talks to himself, but Bob's self-talk is neither positive nor declarative or negative. Instead, 
you know, he talks to himself and he asks a question, can we fix it? So that's an important question. Even in the situation with the realtor, I could say, can I fix it with the next realtor, for instance? Or, you know, can I find a way to fix it with that realtor if I really wanted to? In that case, it just wasn't worth it. There's so many in the area, who cares? But, you know, um, can you fix it? So if you are in a sales situation or if you're in some negative situation, you should ask yourself instead, it's my fault or it's his fault or it's her fault. Instead of saying that, ask the question, can I or can our team fix this problem? Like, what can we do? And then your mind starts thinking realistically and starts analyzing and assessing the situation. So ask the question when something negative happens, can we fix it? All right, I'm Kirk Barbera with Real Elite, and this is your business book tip of the day. Write me below in the comments so we can talk about it if you're, you know, if there's a great situation where this could be relevant to you.